In this lesson, we're going to talk about the loft and boundary features. Loft and boundary are, for most purposes, approximately the same. There are some functions that loft can do that boundary can't, and there are some things that boundary can do that loft can't. But aside from some specialized functionality, loft and boundary are approximately the same sort of feature. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate the boundary feature, and let's get started with a brand new part. Loft and boundary are different than some of the other types of features that we have seen because they interpolate geometry between multiple profiles. So I'm going to start with a circle. Let's put a dimension on it, four inches. This is on the top plane. And now I'll make a copy of the top plane about six inches away. So let's change this value to six. And then on that new sketch plane, I'm going to create a hexagon. And let's make it about that size with the circle having the diameter of 2.5. And set one of these lines to horizontal. So with the boundary feature being all about interpolation, what it does here is it will interpolate the change in shape between a circle and a hexagon. Now there's a lot of things going on in the screen here. Let's just take a moment to examine that. The green lines that you're seeing, these are called the curvature comb, and they're generally there to measure the curvature or radius of sketch entities or curves. For what we're doing here, they're just getting in the way, so let's turn them off. With the curvature comb off, we can see that the black lines are set up to curve around the part. But these green handles, called connectors, will allow us to control that twist. So we can grab this lower connector and straighten out the feature. Now you can't put dimensions or relations on these connectors, but you could snap them to existing geometry points if you wanted to. So if you really needed to control this connector, you should go into the sketch of the circle and put a sketch point at a particular location, and then you'd be able to snap the connector to that sketch point. So you can see that with these intermediate shapes, the circle gets progressively more hexagonal, and the hexagon gets progressively more circular. You can increase the visibility on this by sliding up the mesh density and watching the change happen a little more closely. We accept this feature just to see what the finished geometry looks like. It's indeed an interpolation from a circle to a hexagon. Let's turn off the display of the plane just to get it out of the way. Now let's go back to the boundary feature and try some options with it. Sketch 1 and Sketch 2 can each be controlled to some extent. So I can select the Normal to Profile option for the end condition, which allows us to control how the shape comes off of the circle. Notice that the circle has more influence as we have selected Normal to Profile. If I select Sketch 2 and change the end condition for this, I could also set Normal to Profile for that as well. And then the weighting, or the tangent length number, can also be set to control how much influence each profile has. And as a profile gains influence, the shape right next to it will become straighter, and towards the middle, you'll get more of an S shape. So the finished geometry for this has this sort of look. If you were to move one of the profiles, let's move the hexagon. We'll delete the relationship here and I'll put in some dimensions to locate the profile. So you can watch and see how the tangency at the ends affects the overall shape of the part. Boundary and loft can have multiple profiles, more than just start and end profiles, and they can also use guide curves. In boundary, if we edit this, the profiles and guide curves are called just direction one and direction two because the boundary treats both directions exactly the same. 
This is somewhat different from the loft, which uses profiles and guide curves, where profiles and guide curves do not function in exactly the same way. Shapes are more often smooth when they have fewer profiles, but sometimes you may have specific needs for more profiles to more accurately recreate an existing shape. One of the functions that a loft feature can do that a boundary cannot is called a centerline loft. Let's create a new part to create a centerline loft. On the front plane, let's create a closed loop spline. And then on the right plane, let's create what would be a sweep path ordinarily. So we'll use a spline in this case as well. But we're not going to touch the profile. Notice that I'm starting in the center of the profile cross-sectional shape. And then at the end of this path type shape, I'm going to select the spline itself and its endpoint, create a new plane, and draw another closed loop spline. Now, the one difference between the sweep and the centerline loft is this. A centerline loft can have multiple profiles, where a sweep can only have a single profile, one path, and then multiple guide curves. The centerline in the centerline loft most closely resembles the path in the sweep. Centerline loft is most appropriate when you need to manipulate the direction of the loft perpendicular to the profiles. So the centerline doesn't actually ever touch the outside profile sketch shapes. If you were to do this with a boundary feature, the centerline would need to touch on the boundary, both the first and the second boundaries for the feature. Centerline lofts are rare enough, but when you need more control over a sweep than you can get with guide curves, sometimes the centerline loft is the thing to do. It's a type of control you cannot get from a boundary feature.